Yeah, it's raining right now, David, and it made for a whole lot of this. Wet, soggy leaves clogging up drains all over the city. Not exactly ideal conditions for the folks cleaning up the mess. For a list of pickup locations and to request some leaves for your own home garden, head to KVAL.com. Reporting live outside in the rain here in Eugene, I'm Lisa Nico. I'm live outside what's been an emotionally charged courtroom as jurors continue to hear from David Bowen. Well, it didn't take long. Jurors came in to deliberate around 2.30. Then by 5, the verdict was in. They found 43 year old David Bowen of Cottage Grove guilty on all three charges. As you can see, the storm has already caused some areas of localized flooding and Eugene Public Works says this is just the start. Sergeant Charbonneau says it all happened Sunday night. 24 year old Kelly Newton was with her boyfriend, 33 year old Logan Jackson right here at the Brick House Strip Club. Before 545, they left the strip club, walked across the street to their parked car, and started having sex. They were, quote, too caught up in the moment to realize their activities had caused quite the traffic jam right here in front of the Springfield Jail. About follow-up, we told you yesterday about a pit bull attack in Vanita. And new tonight, KVAL's Lisa Nico looks into dog attacks in and around our area and what you need to know to keep you and your family safe. Lisa? I crunched the numbers, and agencies around Lane County respond to an average of roughly 300 reports of dog attacks each year. Authorities say the breed they respond to the most is pit bull. I spent the day finding out why. Yes, thank you for my kisses. That's a good boy. Debbie Schaefer is a professional dog trainer. Do you want to go get it? As oh. owner of the well-mannered dog, she specializes in all sorts of breeds, including pit bulls. There's a myth that they have a locking job. And says because of their power, pit bulls are often cast in a negative light. Human types were drawn to the breed because of its strength and then or because of its guard dog type tendencies and then because those people were owning a lot of the breed uh, the bad rap developed. Schaefer says most well cared for pit bulls actually love humans. They're originally the nanny dog and so uh, back in the early 1900s they were used to babysit the kids because their skills with children were so remarkable. <laughs> Lovable shelter director Liesl Wilhart agrees the breed is not typically aggressive towards humans, but is sometimes towards animals. Pit bulls were bred to fight in a ring, other animals and other dogs. It's a horrible thing, but that meant that they also had to be very, very good with people and their handlers and their families. If your dog does break out or is attacked by another dog, Wilhart says try to stay calm and avoid touching the animal's faces. Get behind the dog and and take their collar, get it up as high on their neck as you possibly can and twist it until they can't breathe. It might sound rough, but she says it is safe. As soon as the dog doesn't have any air and can't breathe, it will relax and just let go and then you can pull the dog away safely. Um, while Hart and Schaefer agree, having a dog is serious business. Responsible dog owners should have fortified enclosures for their animals, keep them on a leash, train your dog, and of course, spay or neuter your pets. Reporting for KVAL News, I'm Lisa Nico. In Springfield, the dying fir tree has taken on a new life. That it has. KVAL's Lisa Nico has met the woman behind an impressive piece of artwork in the Washburn District. Lisa? Standing stoically upon fragrant sawdust, nestled in the heart of the Washburn District, is a fresh carving. For homeowner Nancy Gronfeld, the piece of art is the latest incarnation of a beloved tree and its bittersweet journey more than a century in the making. I'd do it all again. I'd do it all again. It's brought joy to a lot of people. It was Nancy Gronfeld who noticed cracks at the base of her tree a few weekends ago. I knew that wasn't a good sign. Our arborist came out that afternoon and gave us the bad news. Gronfeld knew she um, had to do something special with the tree that had watched over her historic home. They protect the house. They provide shade. They have an infinitely strong spirit. For more than a century. It was not easy. Um, it just, it just rips your heart out. Inspired by chainsaw art around Oregon, she found William Tower, a tree carver from Oak Ridge. You can't replace an old growth tree, but 
we can we can repurpose it and and bring it to life in a new way. In four days, Tower transformed the 100 year old stump into an eight foot Sasquatch. Sasquatch has always been uh, personally important to me as a, a spiritual creature and a totem animal and um, and it's indigenous to the Pacific Northwest, so it just seemed appropriate. It's just been a positive thing to bring people into our very unique neighborhood. Neighbors agree. And it's a fantastic town, and th these kind of things just make it even better. We need more of this in the community. If I had a dollar for every car that has stopped and, and gotten out and taken a picture, I could retire early. Ronfeld says the unconventional art connects the community. It's here. It's here for everyone to enjoy. Gromfeld lovingly called the fur Big John and named her new Sasquatch Juanita in its memory. Reporting for KVAL News, I'm Lisa Nico. We have a health alert tonight. Residents in a North Eugene area are worried about a deadly disease claiming the lives of cats. Well, KVAL's Lisa Nico went out to the Santa Clara neighborhood today to learn more about the problem. Lisa, what'd you find out? Janet Nori and her daughter Kate Reese believe it's the distemper virus that's killing feral cats in the Irving Road, Donegal Street area and they say neglectful owners who don't fix and vaccinate their cats and who abandon their animals are to blame. Do you take your child to another neighborhood and just push it out of the car? And this neighborhood seems to be like a magnet. Like, I don't know, maybe on Yelp. Where do I drop my cat? Yelp, right here. Reese and Nori have already watched one cat abandoned in their neighborhood die. And the person that lives there picked up the dead body and disposed of it. They're hoping his brother, another feral cat, might somehow survive the highly contagious disease. He's looking a hell of a lot better than he did yesterday. Oh, and the day before, I really I really thought he was going to go. It's a hard life out there. Veterinarian Dr. Gail Schroeder says she hasn't seen many recent cases of feline distemper in the area, but the viral infection can spread rapidly between cats. From grooming each other and sharing food and water dishes and toilet areas. Reese recognizes the symptoms right outside her door. He's over there shaking his head and just acting weird. A uh, bloody sputum in its nose and its eyes were hardly open and they're really gooey, gooky looking. They succumb very quickly to it and unfortunately a lot of them will die from it. Now the two women are trying to keep their own cats healthy. Because they know once it starts in an area, it's in the dirt, it's in the grass. You can't get rid of it. Even if you can think of when you were a little kid and you were sick, would you want to be outdoors in the cold and nobody feeding you? While watching the disease slowly consume another life. It does attack their nervous system. Yeah. And that must be really painful. It must just make it want, want to die. As a cat lover, it really breaks my heart. There is something you can do to help stop the spread of this deadly disease. If you notice a feral cat problem in your Lane County neighborhood, contact Green Hill Humane Society for free help and information. And remember to schedule a vaccine for your own pet and get it spayed or neutered. Reporting for KVAL News, I'm Lisa Nico. Around Oregon now, a bend man is looking to reunite a lost camera with its owner. KVAL's Lisa Nico has been trying to help track down the photographer and Lisa, what do we know so far? Katie, the people photographed in these pictures seem to be very outdoorsy, climbing, hiking, even just hanging with family. This lost camera documents it all. Backyard barbecues, mountain climbing, hiking the Obsidian Trail, lounging by the Willamette. Memories, moments frozen in time, gone in a flash. The man who found the camera is from Bend. He wouldn't let me record the phone call, but says the camera looks something like this. It's a Sony Cybershot with over 650 pictures on it from all around Oregon. The finder believes this man is the owner. He says the man took dozens of selfies with the camera, which is why he thinks the camera belongs to him. The man says he found the camera around Thanksgiving 2014 in the parking lot of Manley's Tavern near Crescent Lake. He took the camera home, left it on a shelf, and forgot about it. Until last weekend, reinvigorated, the Good Samaritan is turning to news outlets and social media to reunite the lost memories with the people who shared them. 
Well, this story might just have a happy ending after all. Just a few minutes ago, we got a lead on who this man might be, but I'm still trying to get into contact with the camera owner or any of his friends in those pictures. I'll give you an update though later tonight on KVAL News at 6. Reporting for KVAL News, I'm Lisa Nico. But as KVAL's Lisa Nico reports, we're now learning more about the camera and its owner and who that may be. Lisa? Katie, according to the man who found the camera, most of the 650 pictures on the memory card were taken in and around the Eugene area. But that's not where it was found. The Good Samaritan says he found the Sony Cybershot in the parking lot of Manley's Tavern that's near Crescent Lake. He says pictures show the man and his companions exploring all over Oregon, including Bend, Willamette Pass, Hayward Field, and even Mount Pisgah. We posted the pictures on our Facebook page earlier today. Steve Andreessen recognized the man as someone he's known since high school, Kevin Clark, otherwise known as Moose. Now comes the hard part tracking him down. The reason he found a camera is because he doesn't have a cell phone. He never has had a cell phone. We're talking about how he's frugal and stuff like that, you know. Frugal on steroids, uh, you know, yeah, to the point that's kind of, uh, it's funny, actually. Andreessen describes Moose as a philanthropist, a valuable member of the community who loves helping veterans and exploring the outdoors. I've reached out to Moose today and I'm still waiting to make contact with him. Be sure to follow me on Twitter for any updates. Reporting for KVAL News, I'm Lisa Nico. A KVAL follow-up tonight. Last month we told you about a man who found a camera in a parking lot outside of Bend. And thanks to viewers like you, we were able to identify the man in the pictures. KVAL's Lisa Nico has been working working to get the camera back to its rightful owner. She joins us now live in the studio. And Lisa, what a journey this has been. Yeah, it has been a long journey for the camera and for its owner. A man I've been in contact with for the last month, a man named Moose. Meet Moose. Everybody calls me Moose. Moose and his friend Steve Andreessen spend their free time exploring the great outdoors. Climbed with three sisters, all three in one day. That's something that I don't know anyone else who's accomplished. If you look up at the three sisters like we do every day in this community, you want to have say I've been up there. And documenting adventures with his camera. Not a phone, because he doesn't have one. That's because he's frugal on steroids. The only food he actually eats is sunflower seeds. <laughs> All of that exaggeration like there. <laughs> I don't have a lot of things that people have that, th that people think is mandatory, but um, a simple life, um, I have enough communication with everybody I need. Also captured on the camera, his time with seniors and veterans. I volunteer for the veterans of Portland. It's really something that uh, you get a lot more out of than you get. He's actually a, a humble man when it comes right down to it. He's not the kind of person to talk about himself or talk about his accomplishments. Uh, that's primarily because there are so few. There are so few. I was wondering who's going to say that. Him or me. Tuesday. Is this what was missing? Moose was reunited with those memories. It's a one bit of technology and a treat I have given myself is a camera. Oh, it's even in the case. Look at that. With the 10 cent garage sale tag on it, I'll be darned. And eager to make some new ones. I'm going to see if it works, guys. <laughs> there it is. Oh, wow. Another memory on an old camera with a new friend. I think that requires a picture of us. Of us? All right. <laughs> Moose says he plans to call the man who found the camera, Cliff, to say thank you. He'll be using a friend's cell phone. Reporting for KVAL News, I'm Lisa Nico.